And thank you for being with us. We are ready for another great week of PA Harness Week, racing's fastest paced half hour. I am your host, Britt Purdy, joined by the beautiful Heather Vitale. Thank you, Britt. Oh my goodness. It is the weekend and they say relax and don't blink because it will go by so fast. I feel like that's kind of like today's show. Like it's gonna be over like that. There is so much content to get to. So here's what you can expect to see over the next half hour. This week, we've got standout horses racing in the Pennsylvania All-Stars. Top Hamiltonian contender Amigo Volo made some noise. We'll show you how he did. And driver George Napolitano Jr. lit up the track at Harris, Philadelphia. And racing's favorite mayor, Chartin, was looking to reconnect with the winner's circle. These stories and so much more, all up next on PA Harness Week. When you go to the races, you see a lot of horses and a lot of drivers. There's one guy that you don't see, but you hear him a lot. Of course, that is the announcer. But in this harness racing education feature, we're going to see him too. That's right. Let's meet the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono's very own Jim Bavilia. Go, 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 Bailey in 154. That's not even possible, goo goo gaga. Jim Bavilia echoes throughout the track as he brings excitement and passion to every start and every finish. The great thing about the racing, or the way it is right now, is that every week we're seeing new track records, new world records, and you sort of reset the standards every week. Jim has called thousands of races, but there is one race in particular that stands out as being one he will never forget. Breeders' Crown, obviously, they were they were all amazing, and uh, the very final race, Rock and Roll Heaven, who was just an amazing three-year-old pacer. I just remember the excitement, and when he got to the three-quarter pole, I think he got there in something like 120 and one, which was just a ridiculous time. And I even, you know, I just it's supposed to be professional up there, and I just said, "Are you kidding me?" On the air when I saw that fraction, so that one will always stand out. People still talk to me about that. Rock and Roll Heaven, clear by two, three quarters, 119 and four, 26 and two. Are you kidding me? Rock and roll heaven is out here by four full lengths. What's the most challenging thing about this job? Um, the challenging thing, I guess, is just to come with that same enthusiasm every single night. But again, the quality of racing is such that, you know, it helps me to do that. He's untouchable. He's unbeatable tonight. Rock and roll heaven, a coronation of the Breeders' Crown Final. You know, the races are so great that all I have to just sort of be is just not get in the way of those races because they are so great and the excitement will just sort of build itself. But just bringing that enthusiasm every single night, even for a non-winners of one trot, because the it means a lot to those horses and horsemen out there. Growing up just a few miles away from Pocono Downs in Old Forge, Pennsylvania, this job has been a dream for Jim since he was a boy. My dad was actually a uh, teller here when Mo when Pocono Downs opened back in the 60s, so I was coming here as a kid. So for me to get this job, it's kind of like a dream come true. I never thought, you know, this would be sort of my destination, and to to have this opportunity, it's amazing. But yeah, I've been watching since I have a kid, since I was a kid. I've worked at Pocono in some. Uh, uh, way, shape, or form in 19, since 1997. The voice of the Poconos, Jim plans on being heard for many years to come. I loved having Jim on the show, and I got to say that that Rock and Roll Heaven Breeders' Crown race, also a, one of my favorite all time. So thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. Right now, we do need to take a quick break, but when we come back, we've got some big showdowns from the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. We've got the best of PA All-Stars and the Pennsylvania Sire Stakes. It's all next on Racing's Fastest Pace half hour. Outside is crucial. Inside 50 cent piece making another move here. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter. The meals are just a little tastier. And the slots a little hotter. When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer. And you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer, so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on, Mohegan Sun Pocono. 
In the world of standard bread racing, only one name is synonymous with this kind of success, this kind of history, this kind of greatness, this kind of legacy, and this kind of unparalleled promise for tomorrow. Proud of our past, excited about our future. You know the name, that one name, Hanover, the greatest name in harness racing. Welcome back. You are watching PA Harness Week. It is time now to show you our race of the week. Our race of the week from the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono is a sire stake event. We're looking at a race from Sunday, July 26th, and this is a pack of three-year-old Colton Geldings. There are two divisions, each with a purse of over $95,000. So we're going to start with race number 10. Heavy favorite in here is number five, Amigo Volo, who was looking great with a win two starts back, but then he finished fourth in his most recent outing. It's Amigo Volo by a length and still done not asking. Patriarch Hanover staying close second further back to Didi's Redemption and Hill Exotic on the outside fourth. Top of the stretch, Amigo Volo by a length and a half and separating now from Patriarch Hanover. Amigo Volo done real. He didn't have to ask. Amigo Volo all on his own. Amigo Volo was in complete control as he crosses the wire first. Five lengths ahead of his competitors. Dexter Dunn is in the driver's seat for this 152 mile, which is actually a lifetime mark for the son of Father Patrick. Now, he's a world record holder, a multi world record holder, and trained by Nifty Norman. Second was Patriarch Hanover. Third was Dee Dee's Redemption. And I just want to make a note that. Amigo Volo's next task is taking place today, August 1st, when he is in the Hamiltonian eliminations. And then, of course, the final for the Hamiltonian is August 8th at the Meadowlands. All right, well, for right now, let's stick with PA Sire Stake action. This is another group of three year old Colt and Geldings. This is race number nine. In here, it's number seven, L Ideal. Number four, Move Out of My Way, is the second choice. And the rest are double digits. Well, L Ideal hasn't been able to shake uh, the pocket horse there. Swiss House on fire, Move Out of My Way and made a break. So Romani Blue Chip into third in the gap to Hell Patrol in fourth. Top of the stretch. L Ideal leads. Swiss House on fire. Getting a little bit more cover now to the outside. It's L Ideal by a length and a half. Swiss House on fire. All out trying to get there. Won't get past. L Ideal. L Ideal, a son of Muscle Hill, wins in 153. It's a front end victory. Trainer Alke Svonsted actually was in the driver's seat for this one as well. His stablemate, Longshot Swiss House house on fire was second and then picking up the show money was hell patrol. <laughs> well, staying at the downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono, we're going to take a look at some PA all star action. This is for three year old Philly trotters. There are four divisions, each with a purse of $30,000. Let's start with race number 10, the fourth division. Number one, crucial with George Brennan is the favorite and number four, Miss McKee, driven by George Napolitano Jr. is the second choice. Miss McKee by a length at three quarters, 124 and one, 28 and two, third panel. Miss McKee tough on the front end, but on the outside, crucial, not giving way. Inside third there is 50 cent piece, a little bit further back to Hannah in impressive fashion. Top of the stretch, it's Miss McKee. Outside is crucial. Inside 50 cent piece making another move here. Miss McKee still a slight lead. Outside crucial, Miss McKee. Miss McKee, a daughter of Muscle Massive, trotted to the fastest of the PA All Stars in here. It was a lifetime best of 153, trained by Jack Baggett Jr. She went wire to wire with George Napolitano in the Driver seat crucial took home the place spot and then 50 cent piece was third. Let's take a look at race one, which was the first division of PA All Stars action from this night. As the explosive Matter Philly, number four, Queen of the Hill, took a lifetime best of 154 and four with Tyler Buter driving. The one to five favorite is trained by Purr and Guam. Taking second was Margot, and third went to Aldebaran Ravani. Moving on to race three, which was the second division of four events for the three year old trotting Phillies, it was Sandy Faux, trained by Ron Burke, winning in 154 and one. 
the daughter of a muscle hill was the one to nine favorite driven to victory by Joe Bongiorno. So we have Sans Default, which means flawless in French. Second was Queso Fresco, which means fresh cheese in Spanish and All's Well Hanover, which means All's Well Hanover in English. And that horse took third. Now I'm going to move right into the final division to cover these gals. And it was race five, which saw number three, Dune Hill, the even money favorite, take home a 155 win. This was another Ron Burke trainee. And this Muscle Hill Philly had George Brennan at the controls. Sweet Shirley May took second and Cover Girl was third. We've got more Pennsylvania All-Star actions from Pocono, but now we'll take a look at the two-year-old Philly Pacers. Again, there are four divisions, each with a purse of $30,000. We're going to start with race number four. The favorite is number eight, Marsala Hanover, coming off an impressive third place finish. Number three, the Beach is Calling, is the second choice in this group. Still strong up front, Marsala Hanover, three quarters, 125 and one, 28 and three, third panel. Marsala Hanover by a length and a half. The Beach is Calling, still staying close, but now losing a bit of ground. Outside not happening for far day Hanover inside fighting evil looks for room top of the stretch Marsala Hanover kicks the lead out now to three and a half lengths the beach is calling trying to make a belated move here further back to fighting evil it's Marsala Hanover on top Marsala Hanover has no problems overcoming post position eight as she leads the way about around the five eighth mile oval and 152 and one with Jason Bartlett driving this was actually the fastest of the four divisions she is trained by Hall of Famer Linda Toscano and the beach is calling, which I mean, isn't it always finished second fighting evil picked up third. Now let's see race six. This is division two of four from PA all stars from Saturday. There were three horses right there on the wire, but it was number eight lions soft as silk with Vic Kirby in the bike, making a wide bid and getting the win in one fifty three and three. She paid fifteen dollars and forty cents. The some beach somewhere daughter won by a neck for trainer Jim King Jr. Uptown Hanover was right there for second and also a close third was ideal in miracles. Next up we've got race seven division three of four for the two year old Philly Pacers. Number five dance the night away led the field all the way around the racetrack for the 152 and two victory with Jim Merrill Jr. at the controls. The daughter of a rock and roll dance who went off at odds of seven to five is conditioned by Andrew Stafford. There for the place money was Darby Hanover and showing up for the show spot was Lady Newton. And finally, let's cover race nine, which was the fourth division of four PA All-Stars events with number two, Continua Lou, picking up another win, this time in 153 flat. Going off at odds of eight to five, the Sweet Lou Philly was driven by Joe Bongiorno and trained by Ron Burke. Now three lengths back for second was Podium Girl and a special moment crossed the wire third. We just saw Joe Bongiorno in the winner's circle, which is a place we see him visit a whole lot on this show. Joe is 26 years young. He's racking up some impressive numbers and he's definitely one of the sports rising stars. Joe, it seems like it was yesterday that you were ditching the prom to go to the racetrack and now I'm looking at your stats. Last year, five million dollars in purses earned. When you see those numbers, what goes through your mind? Uh, you know what, I'm just grateful. Uh, I've been given a lot of good opportunities from a lot of good uh, trainers and um, you know, I couldn't be uh, more thankful for really the opportunities that I've gotten uh, at my age. And, um, you know, we just got to hope it continues and, uh, you know, just keep working hard. You're not only a sought after catch driver, but you also have a great stable that you run with your sister, Jen Bongiorno, and all the social media you guys do. It's just fabulous. So how is it to work with your sister day in and day out? You know, we uh, we've always gotten along so good, so it uh, you know it's not really hard for uh, us to work together. And um, you know, Jen does a great job managing the barn, and uh, you know, uh, I try to you know try to go in there and you know go some training trips. And you know, I really just like being around horses. So uh, you know, any any extra time being able to go to the barn and stuff like that is uh, is good for me. And although COVID has slowed us down a little bit, we seem to be in full swing now. So how does your 2020 look? Um, it's, you know, it's definitely off to, a, a, I guess, a slower start. I mean, we didn't race for three months, uh, you know, so it's off to a slower start. But I mean, you know, as far as picking up really good drives, I've been really happy with some of the drives I've picked up for Tony, uh, Tony Alanya and uh, some for Ronnie Burke. And, um, you know, Jen's barn's been racing very well. So, um, you know, and then all the other barns I drive for. But, um, you know, I'm really thankful and 
you know, it's it's almost like we went from going from zero to 60, you know, because we were doing nothing and now it's just been full force every day. So, uh, you know, it's definitely tiring, but, you know, I'm having a good time doing it. A big thanks to Joe. Looking forward to so much more excitement from him the rest of the season. Right now, we do need to take our second break, but when we come back, we've got action on the track from right here in Harris, Philadelphia, plus a blast from the past that takes us back 31 years and a young Hall of Fame driver, John Campbell. And we'll show you the adios eliminations from the Meadows, so don't go anywhere. Around the last turn, the Greek freak has been in control from the start. History. It's written by winners. At Diamond Creek Farm, we're breeding champions and rewriting the history books. Diamond Creek Farm, a cut above. Welcome back. You are watching PA Harness Week. It is time now for our race of the week from right here at Harris, Philadelphia. Our race of the week from right here at Harris, Philadelphia is from Sunday, July 26th. It is number nine on the card. It's got a purse of $14,400 at the top pacing feature. In here, it's number three, Delta Winner, who's the one to five favorite with the deepest pockets in the pack. Got seven figures in the bank. Also, number four, JJ Flynn is second and has been second in his past two outings. And it's Delta Winner leading it by one. The American boy is second. Slick Tony, disastrous trip for him. Love me some moves, trying to go three wide now around him. Half time, 54 and three. 28 seconds for the quarter up the bank stretch. In spades, there's no place to go. J.J. Flynn is locked in two. Father Sarducci is in between rivals now. Mired in traffic there, and Trojan Banner trails towards three quarters. Delta winner by a length and a half. American boy second. In spades, it's to the inside of Slick Tony. J.J. Flynn's looking for racing room. Father Sarducci now moves out into three wide territory. Three quarters 122. They come to the top of the stretch. Delta winner by a length. American boy is second. In spades moves to the outside. Third. JJ Flynn ground saves. Father Sarducci's out wide. They straighten on in for the stretch drive. It's Delta winner leading it by two. Delta a winner second. cut out the fractions in 149 and three for trainer Mark Silva. Now George Napolitano was in the driver's seat. And by the way, this horse has three wins this year and guess who is driving all three times? Yes, Georgie Knapp. In addition to the fact he had one, two, three, four, five, six winners on this single Harris of Philadelphia card. Way to go, George. J.J. Flynn was second. American Boy picked up third. We're going to stay right here at Harris Philadelphia for this one. We've got a group of conditioned pacers. This time it is five-year-olds and under. It's race 14 from that Sunday card, and the purse is $12,800. In here, number four, Stone Hanover is the better's choice. This horse has been first, second, and third in his last three. For a second pick, check out number three, Force and Fury. That's the second choice. Drop down in his class from his sire stakes competition. Stone Hanover in front by a length. Random Hanover's right there, second. A length back third to Actor Hanover, but the outside, Force and Fury looks to advance fourth, but isn't. Jason Hanover's fifth by a length and a half. Mancat is pinned to the inside. Of Where's my money? Still trailing Gia's boy to three quarters, and Stone Hanover looks to open up now. Stone Hanover's being driven, leads it by a couple. Random Hanover's have the journey second. Actor Hanover's coming back for more to the outside third. Saving ground, Chaser Hanover. Three quarters, 122 and three. They come to the top of the stretch. Stone Hanover. Here comes Random Hanover. Here comes Actor their Hanover. Here comes Chaser Hanover. They straighten away for the stretch drive. Stone ha Hanover on a precarious lead. Random Hanover on the outside. Chaser Hanover trying to spring it up, set up the inside. Mid stretch. Stone Hanover. Stone Hanover got away fourth, but then grabbed the lead as they went by the stands to win in 115 and three. Simon Allard was in the driver's seat for this Joe Pavia Jr. trainee. It was also a lifetime mark for this four year old pacer. By the way, this was a Hanover Palooza of a race. Okay, so we've got Stone Hanover finishing first, Chaser Hanover finishing second, Actor Hanover finishing third, and Random Hanover finishing fourth. This week for our blast from the past, we're going to take you all the way back to 1989. We're going to take a look at the Breeders' Crown. It is from the Free State Raceway in Maryland. This is the return of the Mac. The great Mac Lobel is the one to beat in here, and the payout, a whopping $250,000.
They're out of the turn and down the back stretch. Mac Lobel by a head, right alongside in second, Red Roan. Racing in to be third, Noble U. The cover belongs to Del Rey Lobel. He might be a factor. Saving ground, Chadwick Hanover. Vizzy Hanover is up on the outside at Armro Garnsey. This field is now head to head, racing by three quarters in 127 and three. Mac Lobel on top by a nose. Red Roan right alongside, he looks him right in the eye. Red Roan now takes the lead. Mac Lobel gives way along the rail second. Del Rey Lobel on the far outside third. Noble U looks for racing room. Chadwick Hanover, Vizzy Hanover, and Armbro Garnsey. It looks like Mac might be beaten, but he's fighting back. Mac Lobel, Red Road. Here's Del Rey Lobel on the far outside. Del Rey Lobel in front. Mac Lobel was looking for his fourth Breeders Crown victory, but it was another Lobel, and that's Del Rey Lobel at odds of 14 to 1, who kept him from getting it. John Campbell in the bike with Del Rey Lobel. Red Roan was second. Mac Lobel was there for third. Now, the interesting part of this is that John Campbell used to be the driver of Mac Lobel and then was taken off of his driving duties earlier in the year and then comes back and ends up beating the great Mac Lobel. We're going to hear from that young whippersnapper driver, John Campbell, right now. It's always a thrill to win a, a Breeders' Crown, and it's, uh, it's a little more exciting when you win it with a long shot. So uh, it was definitely odd racing against Mac Lobel, but he's just another horse in the race once you're turning behind the gate, and you have to do your best to beat him. We know it is a good racing day for you guys when you get to watch racing's fastest-paced half hour, <laughs> but... There's also a pretty big stakes event at the Meadows today. Yes, there is. It is the Delvin Miller Pace for the Orchids. The Adios. Sorry, it's for three-year-old male pacers. It's going for $375 thousand dollars and if you want to know who's in it well we're going to highlight the eliminations for you right now that happened last saturday first we're going to check out race number five and it was number four the better's choice the greek freak with matt kakaley in the bike who won the first elimination he set off the fractions for the 149 and four effort it was a lifetime best and the fourth consecutive victory for the ron burke trainee later dudes was second and chief mate took home the show money in the second elimination race number eight. It's number four. Poppy Rob Hanover was the overwhelming favorite while the rest of the field was double digits. The Brett Pelling trainee won by ten and a half lengths in 147 and one, which was a world record and the fastest mile ever paced at the Meadows. Hall of Fame driver David Miller was in the bike. However, unfortunately, Poppy Rob Hanover has suffered a broken coffin bone. Not only will he not be in the Adios final, but he's done racing for the remainder of the season. That is such a shame for Poppy Rob Hanover. We are sending out well wishes for speedy recovery for him, but we do need to take a look at that last elimination, and it was race number nine. Number seven, catch the fire, stayed so gutsy in this event, and he held on for the 149 and three win. Mike Wilder was in the driver's seat for the John Ackley stable. Super close second, went to the favorite, Captain Midnight, and Elver Hanover was there for the show money. Again, the Adios final takes place today at the Meadows near Pittsburgh, and you can go online. They're having some incredible coverage of the race and the whole day, which is amazing. But uh, I've got to tell you, I might not be a fortune teller, but I'm saying that we will probably have the race on next week's show as well. Probably. <laughs> well, right now we do need to take our final break, but when we come back, we will hit the road to Plain Ridge Park in Plain Ridge, Massachusetts. And we're going to take a look at the top mare in harness racing. That is Sharpton. And we're going to show you a world record. All the excitement coming up next. The all time trotting track record is in jeopardy. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter. The meals are just a little tastier. And the slots, a little hotter. When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer. And you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer, so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on, Mohegan Sun Pocono.
welcome back. You are watching PA Harness Week. Before our break, we promised that we'd be heading up north. And as promised, we're going to head now to Plain Ridge Park in Massachusetts. This one is from Sunday, July 26, with a six-figure payout on the line. The purse is $100,000 in this Clara Barton race for pacing mares. All eyes are on number two, Shard 10. This is the 2019 Horse of the Year. And in her most recent effort, she finished second in a shocker. Now, will she rebound and make it back to victory lane? Let's see. They're at the top of the stretch and turn for home, and they're all chasing. Chartonin looking to defend her title, looking good in deep stretch. It will be Chartonin. She's going to do it again. It will be Chartonin. Chartonin does not disappoint her fans. Now, last year, she set the track record at Plain Ridge Park. And guess what? This year, she broke her own track record in 148 and 1. Hall of Famer Tim Tietrich had the New Zealand pacing last under wraps. Her stablemate from the Jim King Jr. stable, and that's Soho, Burning Love. She picked up the place money, and at almost 40 to 1 odds, it was Philly Hanover taking home third. For our OMG moment, we're going to stay up at Plain Ridge Park in Massachusetts, this time with an even bigger payout. There is $250,000 on the line in the spirit of Massachusetts trot. Now, this one is also from Sunday. Two of the best trotting mares of our generation are taking on the boys. It is number four, Manchigo, who is the favorite, especially if you like Spanish food, and number seven, Atlanta, as the better's choice second. And the rest of the field are going to post as long shots. They're at the top of the stretch. They're homeward bound. Man, Chango Dental on the inside, but here comes Atlanta bearing down on the outside. Atlanta, Manchango, straight and strong. It's going to be Manchango. There was some serious girl power happening in this race as Manchango sets off the teletimers with a 149 and 3 world record. She is now the fastest age trotting mare ever in history on a 5 8 mile track. It was also an overall trotting track record at Plain Ridge Park. Dexter Dunn in the driver's seat for trainer and Nancy Tactor. Atlanta, she got a good trip. She had to settle for second. And then coming home the fastest actually was run director who took third. That was some great racing up at Massachusetts. But I got to say, we got a lot of horsepower happening here, right here in Pennsylvania. So let's go over the live racing days and times. We'll start with the downs at Mohegan. Hegan Sun Pocono. Okay, so we've got Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday, a post time of 12.30 p.m., and then Sunday, the post time is 5 p.m. At Harris, Philadelphia, the live racing schedule is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, a post time of 12.25 p.m. Sunday post time is 12.40 p.m., and remember, although fans cannot go outside to watch the races, you know, you can go into the simulcasting part of each one of those tracks and put your wagers in there. And if you are a quarantine better and you're still happy betting from home, you can still do that. The website for Harris Philadelphia is pabets.tvg.com. Again, that's pabets.tvg.com. And for Pocono, the website is ibetmohegan.com. Again, that is ibetmohegan.com. While you are getting ready to think about who you'll be betting on this weekend, make sure you visit us on our social media to give Heather and I a shout. You can always find us on Facebook at Harness Week and on Twitter at PA Harness Week. If you missed any of our action-packed episode, you can find the entire thing on our YouTube channel along with all of our previous content. Again, I am your host, Britt Purdy, with Heather Vitale. We will see you back here next week on PA Harness Week.